In the future, loneliness is considered a crime, and all singles are sent to a creepy hotel where they must find a mate within 45 days or be forcibly turned into animals. Have you thought of what animal you'd like to be if you end up alone? Yes, a lobster. After 12 years of life together, the wife of the main character, David, apologizes to him and says that she is leaving him for another. And the latter only asks if her new lover wears glasses or contact lenses. Sometime later, David is taken to a strange hotel by men in strict suits where he is to find his soulmate. Upon arriving at the hotel, the clerk fills out a questionnaire for David and asks him to sign it. He is asked about his sexual orientation, the length of his last relationship, and his distinctive feature. After all, in this world, everyone is looking for a mate based on at least one common trait. David's personal belongings are taken away from him, but he is allowed to keep his dog, which is his brother, who used to be a guest of the hotel, but could not find a mate and was turned into an animal. Upon entering his new room, David notices several sets of identical clothes, a tranquilizer gun hanging on the wall, and 20 darts for it. Looking out the window, he sees the results of today's hunt. The hotel guests are forced to hunt lonely people hiding in the woods, because for each person they catch, they get one extra day of hotel stay. David is visited by the hotel administrator who reminds him that if he can't find a mate within 45 days, he will be transformed and asks him what animal David has chosen for himself. David replies that he wants to be a lobster as they live over a hundred years, have blue blood, and are fertile for life. She praises him for choosing such an unusual animal and tells her staff to strap one of David's hands behind his back. This ritual for newcomers is meant to show that things are easier to do when there is a pair. The next morning, David arrives for breakfast and spots three ladies, woman with nosebleeds, woman who likes cookies, and heartless, psychopath woman. Before he has had a chance to eat anything, he is approached by lame John and whispery Robert. The men sit on the pier, and Robert says that someday he is sure to get on one of the yachts sailing nearby, where couples must pass the final test before they are released, a two-week vacation alone with their loved ones. After breakfast, everyone is gathered in one of the hotel rooms, and the newcomers talk about themselves and their distinctive personalities. John tells the story of how he started limping. His mother was transformed into a wolf and sent to a zoo. John missed his mother dearly and decided to climb over the fence where the wolves attacked him. A few hours later, the hotel guests are sent on a hunting trip. Armed with tranquilizer guns, they try to catch the loners hiding in the woods. Most of the guests never manage to catch anyone, except for a heartless woman who catches as many as four and extends her stay at the hotel to 158 days. In the morning, the maid replenishes the supply of darts and performs the obligatory procedure of arousing the male guests in order to motivate the sexually unsatisfied tenants to find a partner. In the hotel lounge, there are constant propaganda plays about the usefulness of partners in everyday life. One day, Robert is found guilty of onanism and, as punishment, has his hand stuck in a toaster and lightly toasted. On another hunting trip, David takes a seat next to a cookie-loving woman. The woman tries to get David to talk and even offers various intimate services, but comes across as completely indifferent. Then she says that if she cannot find a partner soon, she will throw herself out of the window. A few days later, John, still unable to find a limping woman, decides to take action and swims up to the nose-bleeding woman, faking the same problem. This allows them to form a couple, and the hotel administrator congratulates them, saying that he will keep a close eye on their relationship. And if they have any problems, they will be given a baby to bring their new family together. With just over a week to transformation, David decides to follow John's example. Returning from a round of golf, he notices that a cookie-loving woman has jumped out of a window, but not fatally. He approaches the heartless woman calmly drinking coffee and strikes up a conversation, feigning complete insensitivity to the woman's shrieks. A little later, they meet in a hot tub where the woman pretends to choke and gasps for air. But David, sensing a catch, and doesn't react in any way. The heartless woman says he's right for her, and they form a couple. David desperately pretends to be a psychopath, 
but gives himself away by showing his emotions during intimacy. One morning, a heartless woman wakes David up and tells him that she killed his brother. She then begins to describe how she tortured him and how he whimpered while doing it. David doesn't show emotion, but upon entering the bathroom and seeing the dead dog starts crying. The psychotic woman slaps David and tells him that they will now go to the receptionist, where he will be punished for lying, turning him into an animal that no one wants to be. She heads to the receptionist's office, but David punch her and runs away. The woman sets off in pursuit, but loses sight of David. Enlisting the help of a maid, David manages to shoot a sleeping pill dart at the heartless woman. Together, they take the psychotic woman to the transformation room, where David turns her into an animal. David also shoots the maid, lest she be suspected of helping him, and escapes into the woods. After being in the woods for a while, he is found by one of the loners and taken to their leader, where she allows him to stay with them and tells him that they forbid any displays of affection, be it flirting or kissing. At first glance, it may seem that the principles of this community are the opposite of those of the townsfolk, but both of these communities punish any deviation from the norm with equal cruelty. During one of his survival training sessions in the forest, David is noticed by one of the wildling women, who later rescues him from the Robert during another hunt. The woman asks that he not tell anyone that she helped him, and asks him to bring her a rabbit in exchange for this favor. The loners make their way out to town to do some shopping. There, David and his recent savior pretend to be a couple so they won't get caught, and David learns that the woman is also nearsighted like him. This shared trait causes them to develop strong feelings. A group of loners stage a raid on a hotel. The leader, along with others, ties up the hotel receptionist and orders her husband to shoot her to save his life, but the gun turns out to be unloaded. Meanwhile, David arrives on the yacht to John and the nose-bleeding woman, where he tells her that John has been faking bleeding the whole time so that he wouldn't be turned into an animal. Leaving the hotel residents to deal with their hypocritical relationship, the loners throw a disco party to celebrate their victory. After turning on the same music on their players, David invites a nearsighted woman to dance, which later turns into a passionate kiss. David and the nearsighted woman learn to hide their relationship from others by developing a secret sign language and going on secret forays into the city together, perfectly portraying a couple in love. Sometime later, they decide they would be much safer in the city than in the woods, and they prepare to escape. But the singles leader finds a diary of a nearsighted woman where she details their relationship. The leader decides to punish the offenders, and she takes the nearsighted woman to a clinic under the pretext of correcting her eyesight. But she coaxes the doctor, and he completely blinds her. David runs away with the nearsighted woman from the singles and tries to find at least one thing in common, but all in vain, they like completely different things. Desperate David decides to act radically. Having changed into costumes, they come to a cafe on the outskirts of the city. David asks the waiter for a knife and goes to the bathroom. There he puts the knife to his eye with the intention of blinding himself. But at the climax, the screen goes out, and we hear only the sound of the surf, which hints to us that David has never been able to accept the fact that people don't have to have something in common to love each other, and has decided to become a lobster.